Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Communities Unite. Um, today I'm I'm joined with Jenny and Alana, and Jenny and Alana have been on the podcast before. Um, it's pretty cool because we all know each other from the IBD community, so that helps today. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah i'm gonna just i'm gonna ask jenny and alana to in- introduce themselves in the order that zoom says like who's first on the screen who's second so um I, i'm not picking and choosing it's just blame blame zoom not me um um jenny you don't mind introducing yourself hi my name is jenny i'm 33 and i have had crohn's for four years and i've also had my stoma for four years four years four years Oh, yes. Nearly five. <laughs> nearly five, nearly five. <laughs> yeah, because I, I think it was, yeah, it would have been last year, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, we did the podcast last year. Yeah. It was my first ever podcast I ever did. Yeah. Have you done any since? Or, or Yes, not? I've done a couple since. I, I, I love a podcast, me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's all for England. <laughs> yeah, it's good fun. Alana, would you mind introducing yourself? Hi, so I'm Alana, I'm 27 from Scotland and I've had Crohn's disease for 10 years and I've had <clears throat> my permanent stoma for seven years and I also had my son um, in October last year. Yeah, because it, it, it's quite cool because we were talking about that, didn't we? And I think um, it, it was before you, you had your son, so... Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, yeah. It's, that's the same, like, long ago either. Um, it honestly doesn't. I think this year's just kind of really flown by, and I think it's because last year dragged by so much. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's time flies. Um, when you're having fun. Oh, you're definitely. Fun. <laughs> so, guys, so we, we all have crimes. Um, so it's quite fortunate we do. Otherwise, we wouldn't be here, would we? <laughs> no, we wouldn't know each other. Either. <laughs> yeah. So, um. How, if everyone is everyone doing all right, like with the Crohn's, is it all, all doing okay? Like that side of thing. Yeah, my my, my Crohn's symptoms touch wood. I've been absolutely fine for a while. I've just had other issues. <laughs> <laughs> my Crohn's has been fine. My Crohn's has been settled. So yeah. fingers crossed, it continues. Fingers crossed. What, what about you, Alana? Mine's not been great. <laughs> uh, um, mine spread to my esophagus and my throat. And possibly in my mouth <clears throat> and I've been having the symptoms kind of on and off the whole year and so they weren't really sure if it was oral thrush because I kept getting thrush on my tongue all the time and I couldn't understand why uh, so then they gave me some of the uh, dissolvable pink steroids you know that you can just like swish around your mouth ulcers and gargle and I was doing that but then it was making the thrush on my tongue even worse mm. so then they were like okay well we don't really know where to go from here because when so when I have scopes if it's like down my throat or before if I had my stoma I'd have to have them under general um but for some reason there's some sort of issue within the hospital that I go to that they're not doing endoscopies under general and there's loads of patients that obviously are like myself that really need it um and my IBD consultant was saying like they've been fighting you know the hospital the theater i don't know if it's to do with nhs or the theater or whatnot but he just said that they've been fighting to get it back up and running for months <clears throat> they don't know when it will happen so it was just a kind of guessing game and trying to pinpoint exactly what it was that my issues were so first of all i tried some sort of oral thrush medication it began with f i think it was like flucosanol or something yeah that that's like um and it's the stuff that you find in the canistin cream and stuff potentially yeah. well mm. that made me violently ill i was up the whole night shaking i had so much stomach pain and my ibd consultant has said that if it was poorly tolerated and didn't work then i had to go straight on to medicinide mm. and so i've been on medicinide for about a month now i think and it has actually helped a little bit um but obviously the symptoms are still there i guess it's like you know yourself steroids are not the best of things because they're like a plaster on an open wound it may what's the word i'm looking for it might help symptoms a bit but it doesn't get rid of what's there pretty much so i've been having a lot of throat pain and 
um, ulcers on the back of my throat and like really red and inflamed and feeling sick quite often and it burns, it's, it's really painful. Oh, gosh. Yeah. So that's been me for uh, a few months now. Um, so I don't really know what's going to happen next. So I just have to kind of wait and see what they say at my next yeah. appointment. Yeah. yeah. Do you think, do you think it could be like a knock on of after pregnancy? After the baby? Um, <clears throat> they're not really sure because it's really odd because before I had Odin, my Crohn's was horrendous in my pelvis, um, pelvic area, perineal and inside, um, you know, my lady parts. After I had Odin, um, I think it was May or something I had, uh, MRI of my pelvis and small bowel and all that Crohn's is actually in remission. Oh wow. Um, so they think it's maybe just because I have constant tonsillitis and tonsil stones, maybe because that area is already um, kind Enjoy. of wrecked <laughs> and my immune system, you know yourself, it's like your immune system can only go on an even keel for so long before something tips it off balance and it starts attacking other healthy tissue. Um, so they think it's just kind of to do with that and obviously it's just had a new area to target. It could have been anywhere, but that's just where it's happened to be. Mm. Oh, gosh, yeah. Yeah. But it's been nice though, because I've had a few other people that have got it. Um, so I've been able to kind of speak to them, but in terms of like advice and things, there's not really much you can do for this type of Crohn's because of where it is. Um, and I only have like two medical options left to try that I haven't been on or that I can tolerate. So I'm not really sure if that's going to be what's next. So I'm kind of shit myself a little bit because mm. I don't know, there's my immune system's already really dodgy with infections and things. You know yourself, you get really worried when they mention immunosuppressive medications again. Yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah, I, I completely understand that because... Um... I've been on that, that kind of medication for a very long time um, and it is very hard because, like, because uh, as you guys know, um, the pandemic is over for quite a lot of people who, who are not on this medication and like, like I go out outside and I still go out and, and, and do things the best I can but for example if someone's getting too close to me, um, which I don't like people getting close to me anyway. Yeah um i would say could you step back um please um and i say it nicely um and the, the out of 100 they they they, they may uh, they they may do it and then and um maybe another response may be um i don't have covid um and maybe another response will be um they get offended by by mm. by, by, by me saying that which it's hard because like um like i've been recording this i had my flu jab yesterday um um, probably the latest I've ever had my flu jab. I, I normally have it quite early on, um, but it's been really hectic this year with, uh, yeah. with getting the flu jab and stuff. Um, so I, I went to, um, I went to, uh, it was, it was, I had it in the co-op. Um, like, um, oh my God. <laughs> I had it in the co-op. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they had like a, a pharmacy bit um, because my local doctor surgery were only taking old people for this t apparently. Um, oh, wow. For like this time being and it went very well, I understand that old people can be um, need it as well, but um, but yeah, I couldn't go to my local doctor's surgery. Um, I didn't want to go to the hospital, um, but so I went to the co-op. I, I I didn't mind going to the co-op because I got an England flag for the World Cup. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, but aside from that, the, the thing I liked was it said uh, above before you go into, into like it, it, the pharmacy but it says two meters apart so people were weighing outside which i liked um yeah that's good which you don't really see hardly anywhere, anywhere else. Yeah, yeah no yeah so but um i, I noticed because i'm very um like i noticed that the a lady I was coughing and um i didn't know she was doing me um my uh, my jab and then she did it um which um i think my mum asked her to put a mask on um because she was with me um and which um, to be honest yeah that's see that's one thing that really annoys me because if they're doing vaccinations you should be wearing a mask anyway yeah 
um, sure, because of clinical vulnerable areas. people coming yeah. into the clinics, whether they're old or not. You can have very vulnerable people in there and it's your responsibility as a vaccination nurse to make sure that you're fully kitted out so that not only is she protecting herself, but protecting the people that are coming in. Yeah, yeah. And she did do it and she didn't even know that I had Crohn's or anything as well, which she should look on my records really before she's doing me. Um, but, um, but yeah, it wasn't long. Um, I told her about I did a skydive just to have a good conversation. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the nurse said, I, I, I can't do that, I can't do that. <laughs> no, I don't think I could do that either. Like, yeah. when you told me, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. How did you find it? I was, I, I loved it. Uh, well, I, 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 that at the time, when I was on the floor, but I, I, I was um, in the, um, I was first out, first out the plane. Were you? Yeah, yeah, it's... <laughs> Like um, it's quite funny actually. I was first out the plane because you got you got other people. I'm waving to say bye bye, and then I go. <laughs> um, and then you oh have my gosh. you have a camera. I had a camera lady filming me, which you you know because you have to um be in a certain position um when you're doing a skydive. So you'll um you have to um so you, your guy my guy my instructor guy was on the back of me. I and mean, then I have to, you can, if they either want you to um, put your arms like that when you're going out, which I didn't do because my instructor, he, he, he would rather me, um, it was holding on, I think. Yeah, it, it, it would have been holding on. It's like There's two certain ways they can do it. So, But my, I didn't look down when I was on the edge. Um, what I did when I went down, though, because you've got to go like that and then you're, you're automatically looking down. So I didn't want to look down before I flew out because I was yeah. even more nervous. And I have family members who did it as well, um, which did. And I, I did it correctly <laughs> because you have to put your, your, your legs high as well and, and stuff like that. Um, and I, I was very nervous at that point. Like, I, was, like, I, I held on. I know you... You can let go at a certain point, but I was really holding on. <laughs> um, yeah, I, was, I think I'd be the same. Um, and I, my heart was beating like a good end, and I was very pale. Um, and then I said to the instructor, because he can he can swing you around really fast if he, if he wants you to, once you've because once the parachute out is you're virtually stopped. Um, you don't, you're not stopped really, but you feel like you are. Yeah. Um, and that that was good, and I, I was actually one of the last ones down as well. Because I think he took me really slowly after I said that, because um, I said, is my heart supposed to be beating this fast and stuff? Um, um, yeah. Good it... on you for doing it, though. Like, I, I just yeah, well done. think it's so brave. Um, my anxiety would probably make me pass out before even being kitted up, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, um, but the, the thing was, I had to be kitted up and then unkitted up because I haven't had to wait for the clouds to be really clear. And stuff. Oh, no. Um. So I got there about ten in the morning. I think I just did it maybe after lunch time, and you get really hungry after you do it. So I had like a two-hour sleep. And that wouldn't sleep. have helped your heart, and obviously being pale and stuff either. Yeah, like I, I needed a two-hour sleep. I was shattered afterwards. <laughs> um, How did it affect your stomach then? Like, because obviously, like being that high up in the air, like, does it cause you to like flare a little bit or anything? I think, like, because there's always a risk with, with like, with Crohn's um, and doing the skydive. Um, I, I, I always bear that in mind and everything, um, because I, I, um, I, I, um, I, I watched videos before I, I did it and everything, and um, what it, 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 I felt, it, I, I, I was for, being very nervous was well, help. I guess not having my stomach and everything. But I did it. If I weren't in a good place with my Crohn's, I wouldn't have thought about doing it. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's because um, I haven't had any like pain for a while in my stomach. Um, so I thought I'll give it a go. Um, and I, 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 I did do it, and then I can I can say I've done it now. <laughs> but it's a very, um, good it's good. very good achievement. Yeah. Would you do it again? Um. Well, they did give me a voucher for cheaper for next time. So. Oh, I'll bless them. That was nice. Um, but two things I want to do next is um, go to the, the zip line in, in Wales. 
because I have the, the fastest. Is that one. the one where they go like really far out? Um, but it's not like you don't yeah. even touch the ground. It's like no. in the midst of like hills and stuff. Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, it, it's it's one of the fastest ones um, in in the world. I think. Um, I think there's a TikTok page that um, either like people are like obviously TikTok and videos and um, video on themselves on that place there or the actual place. Um, takes videos and puts them on TikTok. I can't remember which one it was, but I have seen a few. I've yeah. seen I've seen something like that, like an adventure. Yeah. Park. All got stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen that before. I couldn't do that either. <laughs> I've done zip lines before, but but on this one, you're like you're um you're not like stats, like you're not like hanging like that. You're like hanging like you're like maybe gliding a little bit, possibly. Mm. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, I'll do that. I think I might be a bit more nervous because I'm not attached to someone. <laughs> like, you, yeah, you, yeah like... you're just like on your own. Like, okay, here I go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, but another thing I want to do it's bungee jump. I, I wouldn't mind doing a bungee jump. Oh, oh no, mm -mm. no, 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 no. I think that's where I draw the line. A bungee yeah. jump. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, it's bad, I think. Yeah, it probably is. They've done this. I guess the plus about it is it's quicker. Like you, you jump and then you're down and then you go back up again. So it's not as bad, maybe. Um, it might be a bit. I, I wouldn't want to do this. I I would do that abroad. I wouldn't want to do it in UK because it'd be nice, maybe for like the views and stuff. Yeah, and also a bit yeah. warmer, not so cold. <laughs> and rainy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is, it's. Would you crazy. do it, Jenny? A bungee jump. Or yeah. the other one, the zip plane. I. Probably do the zip lining. I've done a skydive before. I oh, did yeah. Sky, yeah, did a skydive in 2014. It's like way before Crohn's, or I thought Crohn's existed. <laughs> and I did it for charity. It was, it was one of the best things I've ever done. So what do you, what does that involve then? A skydive. Oh, the or, skydive. Yeah, I did, I did a skydive. Oh, you did do one. one. Yeah. I thought but you said a scare dive. I was like, what's a scare dive? Oh, no. <laughs> Skydive, yeah. It was great. I, I, I would 100% do it again. And we've been to, in Manchester, we've got the iFly thing. Where That's you can bit, yeah. Inside, yeah. Wow. Do it no, indoor. No, we've no, done I... that a couple of times. Yeah. But don't, don't you think that it's um, it's more better, the actual skydive, than the indoor one? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I I did my I did my skydive and then I bought um the indoor skydiving for me and Rick for like a Christmas present. Rick was petrified. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, so right, I've already jumped out of a plane before. I'm okay. <laughs> like I'm the so expert. sort of yeah. <laughs> And then this last year we got it. We got one for Christmas from one of our family members, like a, a full family pass. So me and Rick and Lewis and Jack all did it. It was great. And loved it. The boys loved it. They loved it when they were in there, and as soon as they were back out, they were like, "No, I don't want to do it again." <laughs> really? Yeah. Is it just because how it made them day. feel afterwards? Maybe then. Yeah, it, I think because JJ obviously with him being six, he was, he was still quite small, so they had to hold him quite a lot, so he couldn't really do much movement. Um, but they taught him like the hand movement. So <laughs> this was that he didn't want to do it anymore, and as soon as he went anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just, just for clarification, it's the thumbs down. <laughs> Obviously, I'm real aware that no one else can see me. <laughs> it's the thumbs down, and he's just constantly doing his thumbs down as soon as he went in. But he did like it. He did enjoy it. But he's, they both said they'd never do it again. Oh, <laughs> well, they might when they're older, though. I know. At least it's something that they've tried. tried yeah, they can it. say to all their friends at school, like, "I've done skydiving before." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you, you kind of feel like um. Superman or Mission Impossible. Um, I mean, I, I can I can totally get that. Yeah. Yeah. But um, in terms of actually doing it, like it, it's just definitely I get sick. Right. This is so embarrassing. You know how you like when you go to carnivals or is that what you call it? Yeah. You know when like the show is come round. Yeah. Yeah. And you get the kids' rides. I can't even go on the kids' rides without throwing up afterwards. Oh, I'm not a fan of spinny ones. Like oh, any of them, even the roller coaster ones, and I cannot go on roller coasters at all. I end no. up just chucking my guts up. Well, don't like the teacups. No, I no. can't. I can't do. I, I think after I had JJ, 
I, I've got an aversion to spinning. I can't spin. No. Anything that's spinning, no. Maybe Even on the TV, spin. it's like, oh, I cannot watch that. And I think it's because during pregnancy, you feel that a lot. Mm. It's the spinning because. sensation because of your blood pressure and things. Um, but this is like, I think I was about, gosh, this is even before I knew Crohn's existed also. <laughs> um, I think I must have been about 15. And I'd went to the to the showies and I went on the waltzers and on the kids ride. And I was like, oh my God, I really don't feel that. I was like, I can't actually walk home. And it was only like a five, 10 minute walk. And it's not like I wasn't capable. My dad lived a 20 minute drive away in another town. And I was like, dad, please come and get me. He's like, I can't <laughs> walk home. And he's like, have you been drinking? And I was like, no, like literally, I've just been on the rides and I really don't feel very good. He's like, right, okay, wait there, I'll come get you. And he came and got me and I was fine in the car. But then I just obviously couldn't move my head. I had to keep looking down and like, oof, like, please don't be sick, please don't be sick. I got home, got into my bed, he helped me get into my pyjamas and I threw up all over my brand new bedroom oh, carpet. God bless you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I... Slightly embarrassing because all my friends were like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, no, no, I don't feel well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because yeah, never again. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say a skydive is like a roller coaster. Um, it's more like um, you just free fall in for a little bit. Um, I, 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 I free fall. It's very was, windy. Yeah, very it's, windy. Yeah, you don't feel. I don't. You don't feel cold. Um, no, you don't feel cold. No. Um, totally forgot that I had a stoma <laughs> like I was getting oh, ready I was no. getting dressed up and everything and I was like oh do I need to do anything different now <laughs> you know, like, I just, like, leave it to the last minute the last minute as soon as I was going in I was thinking oh I, 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 don't, I don't know what to do do I need to wear anything else <laughs> I was fine I was absolutely fine because obviously I wear like I, I like to wear my strapped in knickers anyway so I, that was, I knew that was covered but I just panicked thinking I didn't even think about it's it it's a good job just, that you did though yeah, because I guess when you're trying to get your life back to normal and doing things after having a stoma, sometimes things like that don't cross your mind until yeah. you're actually there and in the moment you haven't really prepared because you think, oh, I'm going to go to this now, I'm going to live my life, but not in the sense yeah. of like, I have a stoma, I'm going to live my life. It's just, okay, well, I'm going to go do this now because I can. And, I, and, and like, you'll before. get there. No issue before. <laughs> exactly, but you forget, don't you? And then you're like, yeah. oh, oh no, like... Um, I like, am I even allowed to do what do it? I do? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have my phone Google anyway. Can I do this? <laughs> I think that's, that's where like it's really important to wear your support wear, especially if you are going out of the house. Uh just as force of habit, I think, so that if you do forget, like you're kind of it's a right. bit more covered. Um I, I tend to wear I, I tend to wear it all the time anyway. Yeah. So it was all right. <laughs> to be honest, I don't really wear much anymore. Um because of my c-section so I have like an overhang obviously where my belly was stretched and then obviously I've got the big cup um and so I sometimes find that like you know the very corners of the bags at the bottom so they sometimes dig into it um mm -hmm. so I've got to make sure now that I've lost weight I have to wear stoma bag covers now only just in the past couple of weeks to stop that from happening because yeah. it rubs on your leg and it causes like really red swollen skin have you had that before? I've had, I've had, I've had like, it's like, it turned into a skin infection, basically. That's my issues that I've been having recently. So obviously I'm on immunosuppressants anyway, and I have been for two years. But at the start of the year, I started getting infections after infections after infections. And it started with um, like a rash underneath my bag. And I thought, oh, oh I might no. have just forgot to dry it. You know, sometimes you can... You can forget to dry the bag after a bath or a shower or whatever. Yeah, you just kind of leave it. So I started changing my bag every every night after a bath, so it'd be dry and it'd be fine. Um, didn't get any better. And then I realised it's actually a skin infection. So I've had an infection somewhere and it's now coming out of my skin. So I ended up going to, that lasted for about four or five, maybe even six months. <laughs> and oh I was having gosh. antibiotics and different types of antibiotics, different types of steroid creams, different types of creams. I ended up going to a dermatologist who's given me creams to put, because it ended up spreading to my armpits. So it went to my armpits, it went to my belly, it went to my back. It was just, it just looked like red blotchy skin. Was it basically. sore? 
it was sore and it was itchy but obviously oh when I was itching it I, I was itching it without realizing so I'd be itching it in my sleep or it would wake me up and I would be itching it and then I'd realize actually it's getting worse so I'd then try yeah. and put cream on it and things and um, so I ended up going to a dermatologist got all that cleared up and that was fine then I started with water infections so it's just been water infections after water infections after water infections and I've had like now five water infections in space of three months or something that I keep getting antibiotics for so don't know whether it's the fact that I'm on immunosuppressants my immunosuppressants are doing fantastic for my Crohn's mm -hmm. but are they now impacting the rest of my life because I'm now getting that's what happened to me yeah so yeah. the, what they're looking at at the minute as to whether because obviously when you've got an infection and when you're on antibiotics you're not allowed to take your injections anyway so I have been taking my injections kind of intermittently so and touch wood no Crohn's symptoms have appeared which is great but I suppose it's but, always a worry isn't it yeah because then you're also taking antibiotics I've had eight uh, sorry 11 different antibiotics in the space of a year so different courses obviously there's they've, they've mm -hmm. been similar courses of the same antibiotics but 11 courses over the space of a year um which obviously I feel like I'm in a lose-lose situation then because antibiotics can affect your gut and I'm also doing nothing to protect my gut because I'm not taking any of my injections my normal yeah. medication so I was just panicking thinking I'm gonna end up really poorly and I don't know so do. have you have you had like an ultrasound and <clears throat> an MRI and things of, of the kidneys and bladder area to try and rule out anything else not yet because I've ended up going back to my GP after, <laughs> obviously I told you before, where I went to the football and spent the whole football in the toilet. I got really upset and I thought, that's now affecting my life. I really need to do something about it. So I went to my own GP and he is following up with things. He wanted to put me on a preventative course of antibiotics. So I take antibiotics after a trigger. So some things I've noticed, like if I drink orange juice, can be a trigger. If me I too. If I have sex, it can be a trigger. So yeah. if I do any of them things, I can then take a preventative dose of this antibiotic that will help. Then my IBD team are saying no, because I can't take my normal medication if <sighs> I'm on antibiotics. So I'm kind of like in a bit of a stalemate at the minute. He doesn't want to refer me to urology just yet because he feels like getting another specialty involved will be kind of like, they only care about urology. My IBD only care about the, my IBD. My GP's trying to look at me as a whole and they're not looking at me as a whole, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I think so. that definitely makes more sense to look at it as a whole rather than one-sided because I had the same issue yeah. when I was and in and no I was one... having Odin and I was just getting so frustrated because... They just don't neurology... talk to each other. No, they, just, they don't. And it's, and so, it's, it's so frustrating. It is. And I think <clears> this is one of the things that people don't realise. It's like, obviously, like I don't work, but for me personally being chronically ill is like a full-time job because you have to do this crap all the time it's mm -hmm. communicating between a part um departments making your own appointments following up appointments wondering when they're going to be reminding them like you do know that you promised me an appointment in three months time doing your prescriptions you know everything like that but the worst part is the miscommunication between departments because yeah. you just want them to just speak to each other even just a letter or a phone call but I guess the problem is that right now they don't have the time to do that. No. It's either just fix the solution, you know, fix it, get the solution and off you go. Yeah. Not actually find the cause of the problem. And mm -hmm. that's where it's frustrating because I was due my IBD consultant appointment last week. And that's what we're waiting for because he can decide whether he can take me off this medication or give me something else or, you know, something to help me with my IBD. And that's what we're waiting for. I ended up getting a phone call from the hospital in the morning. I was thinking, oh, my God, he's early because my appointment is at four o'clock. <laughs> Turns out he'd called in sick. So now I have no no appointment to talk about that. So my doctor, I had another appointment on Monday to discuss my outcome from my Thursday appointment. And of which, course you're just like, yeah, happened. so I've got nothing. Yeah, <laughs> I've got nothing, nothing for you. <laughs> I'm really sorry. But I also realised I had my Barbie bum operation in 2019 in November. Um, and obviously then 2020 COVID hit, didn't it? So mm -hmm. I never had a follow-up from... And like a proper follow up from my Barbie butt um, surgery. Oh, wow. So, you know, part of me is now thinking, is this because of my Barbie butt surgery? Did something happen that could have potentially damaged my bladder? Because it's just so sensitive. The slightest yeah. thing can give me a water infection. Do you know what? I can really relate to you on that one. And it's super frustrating because you can go sometimes a couple of weeks of having very, very minor to no symptoms. And you'll be like, right, this is great. And then just one day, 
or one night, you know, it'll just hit you and you're like, oh my God, I need to go to the toilet. And it's you zero know, to a thousand. It's not like it is. A, it's, it's not, not like a, I had it I last think, night. Yeah. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a water infection in a couple of days. I can feel it. It's yeah. not like that. It's a oh, I've got a water infection now while I'm sat in the toilet after the rest of the week. <laughs> and yeah. then you can't move for a couple of hours. No, and you it's can't. so upsetting. And I thought last night, like, is this maybe like a UTI coming up or have I got a partial blockage or some sort of scar tissue issue? I literally carried my day as normal and then last night I think it was around about this time but no it was supper time actually and I just got hit with this massive intense cramp in the middle of my pelvis and I couldn't move I could barely walk I was like what the hell is wrong with me like I couldn't understand what was going on mm. and then after a couple of hours it just went away but I've been feeling like really sicky uh, dizzy again sweaty you know yourself all the symptoms um but I've actually been having this um since before I even was diagnosed with Crohn's I've had bladder issues for a really long time but nobody took me seriously because obviously I'm young and I was younger right. then and then when I started Humira it was constant UTIs all the time um and then when I was pregnant with Odin I had hydrofluorosis which is where the tube that comes from your kidney down to your bladder it thins okay. I think that's what it is and it kinks sometimes so you get a retention build up um, and I had that, but then it went away a couple of months after having Odin. But I'm still having the recurrent symptoms of UTIs, but also kidney infections. But then, like, my bloods aren't showing anything, mm. and scans aren't showing anything. So they don't all, like, they're not referring me to anybody. I'm just kind of stuck in limbo. Yeah. And so, that, that was the most frustrating thing, because he, my doctor, my GP, he's been lovely. Do you know, you just get that somebody who just is listening to everything. With, yeah. thing, and I was like... You, you, you're fantastic you're doing you're doing really well <laughs> yeah he said to me that he'd spoken to urology because he's trying to keep me out of the hospital like being out, out of referral which I totally understand but he was speaking to one of his colleagues who is like a urology consultant anyway like before he refers me just in case it needs a referral and he's like I don't think you should refer her because she hasn't been getting recurrent UTIs mm -hmm. and I was like but I have been and my doctor knows this because I see my doctor, the same doctor all the time. It's just because my samples haven't been sent off each time that they can't say that I've had recurrent. That's the most frustrating part. Frustrating because it's like I have been giving them to you. You've been testing them, and then obviously they've just been throwing them away once. Yeah, not sent into the lab, not recording yeah. it. I had the same issue Recorded. with my tonsillitis. Mm -hmm. So. For you to be eligible to have a tonsillectomy, you have to have 13 recorded swab tests per year of tonsillitis. But they'd never, ever, ever swabbed my tonsils. And so when mm. I first seen the first ENT clinic lady, she didn't even look with my chronic sinus issues. She was like, it's just migraines and put like a camera up my nose. and was like, well, I can't see any polyps. So you're fine, off you go. And I was like, what? Mm. I was like, I I've been having reoccurring tonsillitis like a lot the next guy was like can I have a look at your tonsils and he had a look and he's like yep yeah, sign the form and that was in 2018 <laughs> and I'm still yeah. waiting to have them removed but that is the worst part I don't know if you've ever experienced that Mason I've had my tonsils out when did you have that um, done when I was really young oh. um because not I, when you were older no no before I had Crohn's or anything um <laughs> I um I, I had it out because I, I struggled with like swimming and everything um and, and always had problems um doing that and my tonsils. Um so I had them out, um, had an operation and everything. Um got a little teddy bear after it and <laughs> oh, I never got a teddy bear. Got it. Um, um, <laughs> um it, I might have got a teddy bear for that one. I, 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 I um I did have another operation where I have a scar on my belly. Um I forgot what that was for because I was so young. <laughs> but oh, one of the one of the operations I went to London um, to um, um, yeah, I went to, I went to London for it and yeah, so it, it was much better when um, I had my tonsils out because it was very bad. Um, but I, I I can I can imagine how hard it is when having a chronic illness as, as well with, with having tonsillitis. It's really difficult because, like, obviously you need to keep hydrated, but then the issue is that your throat's in so much pain that you you, you physically struggle to swallow. 
And the issue that I have now <clears throat> is that I have tonsil stones and I have what's called craters. So if, the only way I can describe that for anybody that's listening that doesn't know what that is, if you picture the moon, you know how the moon's got loads of holes in it? And my tonsils literally look like that. I have huge holes just throughout my tonsils um, and it's extremely painful. Um, and then I also have like, um, I wouldn't say constant, but almost constant, like sort of infection type situation in, in my throat. But because I can't take loads of antibiotics and also because these things do actually tend to clear better on their own than antibiotics. Mm. And top of that with the Crohn's, see, so just like swallowing tablets, it feels like, if you get what I mean, like, you know, if you've been really sick and your throat's really raw, they get stuck. It, oh my God, it's so painful. So I'll be glad when I hopefully get them out. <laughs> yeah. But I had to call them actually. Because again, this miscommunication issue is that they hadn't passed on about the esophageal Crohn's issues to my ENT surgeon. So I called last month and I said, by the way, I said, I think I need to come in for a review by, you know, such and such, because they've just diagnosed me with esophageal Crohn's. I don't know where that leaves me in terms of after the surgery and also maybe during because you know yourselves when you've got active Crohn's in a specific area and you need then temp um s surgery in that area um it can cause like temporary or like um not almost I guess maybe sometimes permanent but healing issues and because it's your throat apparently you've got lots of blood vessels in there or something mm -hmm. So it's quite a tricky operation anyway. So I was like, I think it would be worth if I could maybe just come in. And she's like, yeah, that's fine. I'll do this, that and that. But I shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I had healing issues with my tonsil when I had my tonsil. Did you? I just put it down to, I was very young. I was 16, I think, 17. No, maybe 18 <laughs> when I had my tonsils out. And I used to smoke a lot. And I had my operation in just like a day case. And I thought yeah. I was, so I went home, drank, smoked, had my takeaway. And I, I know, I was naughty, very naughty. And I was back in the hospital a week later because I hadn't healed very well. No. <laughs> but you're not going to because I didn't realise that I wasn't allowed to do anything like that. The thing is, though, if they don't tell you, no. how are you meant to know? Because I guess they might have told you when you just woke up but that is like the worst mm. time to tell you anything and they always do it when you've just woken up and you're just like wait can you just give me a minute like I haven't even had a drink yet and you're relaying all this information out to me and I'm just away with it <laughs> to so, be fair yeah, in, hindsight, <laughs> in hindsight it was probably a, probably something that I should have really known <laughs> So yeah. something that I should have really thought about myself. It probably wasn't a but good then, idea. You, know, you were only 18, and if you've never really experienced anything like that in your life before... No, you know, I was very young. Maybe cut yourself a little bit of slack, but you know, <laughs> you just obviously yeah. just didn't know. Never did it again, obviously. Learned <laughs> your lesson. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I remember, like, having, like, the, the operation and, and, and stuff... Um, because I've never had anything uh, so far, still so far, um, since we last spoke, I've had any surgery for Crohn's, uh, except from maybe since we last spoke, I had, um, it, it might have been before or after, I can't remember. Um, <laughs> I, I went for um, a sick endoscopy just to uh, have a check. Um, I think it was after. It might have been. It might be, I don't know. I lose track of time and days. <laughs> I know, I know the feeling. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, but that's the last thing I had. Like, uh, but I don't, I don't cast it as an operation or anything. I just, uh, but can't sit like that. But, um, but but it's still not nice to have. No, no, because yeah. I I had the the thing that makes you go to the toilet. I can't remember what it's called. It um, was it the enema. Yeah, that's it. Oh, they're awful. <laughs> um, and I I remember um going for it and I went to it straight away. And a lot of blood come out and everything, and oh, no. uh, um, and then I, I told them um, I uh, I got a lot a lot of blood in my stools, um, it was actually just blood because I didn't want I wanted to I stood there I probably, probably about I didn't stood I I, I sat um, <laughs> um, 
for about maybe 20, 30 minutes on the toilet. Um, and because I knew I didn't want to, I didn't want to go back and sit on it yeah. again. <laughs> so yeah. I, I was just staying in it for half an hour. Um, yeah. And, and 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 just chill, try and chill at least. Um, um, so I don't have to go um, again, and I didn't. And um, but I, I remember having when I had the colonoscopy when I was diagnosed the sedation. Um, this time I I would have had the um, the gas and air, which I wanted to try um, because it's something different than than what I'm used to. Mm. Yeah. How did you find? Yeah, I I did I didn't mind the gas and air. Mm. Um, but um, I kept having it because it, you know, like when you have gas and air, it makes you kind of hyper and stuff. And I, I like that feeling. And, and <laughs> um, I think that they, they stopped me having it at some point because I kept saying, "I want more, I want more, I want more, I want more." <laughs> <laughs> um, and I think when I was in pain, uh, they thought I just wanted it for the sake of it. So I, I, I and then, <laughs> um, but um, but yeah, um. I found that more painful than having uh, a gas and air is a more painful um, situation than having to. I think sedation is better, but I just didn't want to stay. At the, I didn't want to stay and that's for thirty minutes just at mm. the end because you do when you're sedated, yeah. don't you? Yeah. You See, the issue, don't you? issue I have is like sedation doesn't work on me. It just gives me like an instant migraine. Yeah. It's like my head's gonna explode. It's so painful, and then I have had gas and air once. Um, but my IBD team were like, you shouldn't be having gas and air. Um, but they never actually said why. Oh. But do you think it's maybe because obviously maybe it might blow up your insides and then you could be at risk of like perforation maybe? Oh, I don't know. I've, I've always oh. had gas and air. Well, I've had gas and air once with um, a stomoscope. Yeah, it just makes you a little bit, little bit drunk. Yeah. Um, mm. um, but, oh, I just don't like it at all. I don't like feeling drunk. I don't drink at all anymore. Yeah. Um. I used to in my youth, like, a lot, like a lot, a lot, until I met Jamie actually. Um. And then just one time, I took a really funny turn, and then I don't know if it's maybe an anxiety related thing, but every time I drink now, I just project I vomit. Mm. Mm. It could be. It could be if you're worried about drinking. Yeah. Yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah. Um. But um, it's more like you, I guess you're just very maybe a little bit dizzy. Um, yeah. Um, like uh, not like the not like when you're really drunk where you don't know where you are and stuff like that. Um, of course, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, then if it'd it be a bit scary if they were giving yeah. that to people and they were like, I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it's not a bad thing. People don't like like you don't drink because it's not entirely that right. Um, like it's not. It, it, it's not like I, 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 uh, <laughs> like, yeah, like, I think though, as well, like, I, I don't know if it's maybe to do with maybe being through as much as what we all have is that maybe because I don't know what it is, maybe because you've been through so much medications and like pain medications and stuff, it kind of makes you feel like when you're drunk, but not in a good way. And I think maybe sometimes. Mm. It's like there's a very fine line between being happy, merry drunk, and then maybe opioid drunk, as maybe what yeah. I would call it, um, which makes you feel very, very sick. It's sad. Then it kind of puts it's you so off, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. I was talking about it today with someone today, like um, taking painkillers and stuff. And um, we were talking about morphine and things like that. If they've had an operation, and I was like, morphine is is good for pain, but it makes you very sad makes you feel very yeah it can it's um it makes me so when I used to have like procedures so even like for colonoscopies I always had to go under general because it was just absolutely excruciating for me to even be touched um on my bum and every time I would wake up and they give me morphine and it turned me really aggressive Uh like not as in like oh my god I'm gonna punch you but it was more just like ah like really like oh yeah, and then eventually it just started making me sick all the time, and I was like, I don't want that again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I remember going for my when I went for that sigmoidoscopy, um, and it it, it it it's just a bum area, it's not, um. So they they, they, they they sit the tube down and then they go up and they, they look around like halfway and stuff. And at, at some points, I was going, I was like saying, ah, 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 like 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 I was in pain, um, and I don't think they looked. 
maybe they they missed you a few bits when I was in a little bit of pain because I was I was I was growing to say ah. Um, it is painful yeah, though. Yeah, it is. Yeah, oh, it is. It is. It's hundred. Although I have to say, like when I had the scope through my stoma, I didn't have anything. Um, and I found that really easy. The only part I didn't like was when they put the the air inside you. That was really uncomfortable. Because mm. yeah. you just feel your stomach going really distended and really tight. Yeah, you feel a little bit like a balloon, don't you? Um, Literally. Yeah. I think that's probably... I mean, it's, it's the worst part. Maybe for some people, that's maybe the easiest part. But I just find it really, really painful when they were putting the air in me. Yeah, I, I, I didn't like when they maybe put in... They'll put in the middle, and um, I think that were the worst parts when they, when they when they do put it in, and then a little bit down the middle. Parts it feels a little bit comfortable, a little bit, but yeah. um, for the most part, it's just it's not um, great. Tell you a funny story, actually, with my very very first colonoscopy. So it was the first time I'd ever had sedation, and it, it did actually work that time. And they gave me like pain relief or something at the same time. And so I was quite out of it, but I still watched on the screen. And yeah. so as they were just getting up to, so if you take your belly button and the bottom of your like chest rib cage and just kind of meet those in the middle and then to the left, the, the scope was there. And it must've been like, obviously where the large bubble crosses over and he'd must've pushed it up and it like went to the surface of my skin on my stomach, like, you know, like from the, the inside. And I was like, what was that? And he was like, oh, it's just the camera. And I was like, I'll go do it again. I put my finger there and he literally pushed my finger with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just I... thought it was ace because obviously I was only young and never been through anything like that. And I think that was actually the least traumatic procedure I have ever had done in being diagnosed with Crohn's. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's the highlight of it, of a, uh, I am... Um when you look at the camera screen and they see what's going on, I think. So interesting. Yeah. I, I, it is I did it with my stoma scope as well, actually. Um, and it just, it looked like my large bubble, but it didn't at the same time. I was just like, that is so weird. Um, and I could actually see where my bubble had like kinked as well. Like they couldn't like get past it. It just like would go like that and then just like cut off and then you wouldn't be able to see anything. It was just weird. That's it. And so interesting. Yeah. Yeah, it is interesting. And I think mean, that they, they, they even say to you that like you, like ha, ha, have a look at, like at, at screen. So it, it's pretty cool. Definitely. I think it's nice they give you that option as well that if you want to look, you can. I think sometimes it's quite I think also not maybe reassuring, but also that like your symptoms are maybe justified, like something is actually wrong with you. Um, and I think that was probably the best part about it for me. The prep was certainly the worst part, yeah. Yeah, but it was just nice to to know that something was actually wrong with me. Um, yeah. My stomoscope was the first time I saw Crohn's on the camera, on the really? screen. Yeah, because I don't think even my consultant believed that I was flaring because I'd have, I'd obviously at that point had two different operations and he was like, don't think you're flaring. But you know yourself though, don't you? Yeah, he took some ulcers off my stoma and then as he went in, he was like, oh, there it is. And then he brought it up on the screen and I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> like, I told you so. <laughs> it's like, I can see it. I think the weirdest part about... Um having a scope through your stoma as your stoma tries to push the camera out on its own <laughs> oh my god and I, I, was so like, I was just like just stop just relax and he's like it's okay just relax and I'm like I have no control of what's going on like it does what it wants <laughs> it's funny with the first time I had my stoma scope like that was the first time I've only ever had one um she got me ready obviously the nurse came in and gave me the shorts that we're supposed to wear and I was like what are you giving me the shorts for and she went, well, you're, you're having a scope, don't you? And I was like, oh, I don't have a pump hole. So I don't know how you're going to try and put it up my bum. <laughs> she was like, oh, we'll just put the shorts on anyway. <laughs> I was like, why? <laughs> <laughs> just to make me feel even more humiliated than I already am. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't need these shorts, thanks. <laughs> oh, we didn't get shorts at my colonoscopies or scopes. It was just those gowns. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. It's so I'm very, like, very oh, jealous of all these hospitals have these pretty cool looking shorts and I'd like to try to put a hole in the back. 
<laughs> yeah, I'm always <laughs> trying to let you a gown. <laughs> yeah, they just, you get, they, they give you a gown and a little hole. And, <laughs> and that's literally it. <laughs> Uh, I, was like, I, I don't think I need these and she was like but you're having a scope and I'm like yeah through my tummy <laughs> she was like oh okay <laughs> it's crazy um yeah that... I guess a lot of them don't realize and again it's like um with Mason's situation not reading your notes like I just think like it's so damaging sometimes not mm -hmm. to bother just to take two seconds to read the, like the highlighted so like when you open up uh, somebody's medical notes on the computer it'll come up with like a first summary page of like all the conditions that so conditions that somebody has and allergies and things like that it takes two seconds just to read that and I'm just like come on like can you not just do that I shouldn't have to tell you yeah oh, it's just it gets exhausting and... yeah exactly yeah yeah you know and you feel like as well like when you're admitted as well you repeat yourself about 10 times to 10 different people Mm. so uh yeah but touch wood i haven't had um an admission since my surgery early on in the year yeah i had like a, i had a mini one but i wouldn't say it was an admission i just kind of chilled out in a family room <laughs> at a hooked up to iv fluids so that i could get my blockage to pass and it, it did i couldn't stop being sick so i was just kind of chilling in a little room on a sofa and just on my phone with my blankie and I was in there for the day and then I got home at night. So I don't know if you would kind of include that. Uh, as not full admission. No. Just a, <laughs> a little day trip. <laughs> yeah. I thought I'd go and hang out with the, the folks at uni. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, but when you have like a, like a scope as well, like the part which is, is maybe a bit hard when we until you got to move like over. Like because they they switch sides, don't they? And they say, yeah, uh, you got to move over. And I I always think, hang on, is 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 the uh, is the tube gonna is, is something gonna happen to that, or is, is something gonna happen happen to that that just disrupts everything, or yeah, because I'm moving. It's actually a very low to medium risk of anything happening. The only thing I think that can happen with a scope is sometimes they can cause like a perforation or um perhaps like kind of nick the side of your bubble and maybe cause like a little bit of irritation i think i've only known sure it happened to one of my friends but i have to double check but i'm pretty sure she had a scope and it perforated her bubble and she ended up having to have stoma oh my gosh mm -hmm. oh no. but she didn't have crohn's she had something oh. else i can't remember what it's called though yeah yeah like uh, uh, it's, it's really enough i think like like before you have uh, like a scope and everything like they they, they they, they they tell you all the all the risks that you might have surgery if like if like something happened yeah. and, and you're you never think it's going to be you and then no. sometimes it does happen but I actually haven't heard of it happen very often so no no you just got to try you got to trust that they know what they're doing <laughs> yeah definitely yeah you got to be um that that's the thing you got to trust them like they know what they're doing and. Um, I think it's really difficult though, isn't it? Sometimes if you've had a bad experience, even just once, you find it really hard to trust anybody that's in charge of your care. Mm. Even, I guess, for people that maybe haven't had a traumatic experience, but it definitely intensifies that anxiety of when you go in. And um, I definitely have medical PTSD and I guess over the years, I don't know about YouTube, but I've actually had to learn just to advocate for myself rather than what I do on my social media, like the both of these, where we advocate for people like us. But when you actually go into hospital, you have to advocate for yourself. And sometimes it can be like very anxious and like a horrible time because you're sitting there wondering like if somebody's going to believe you or are they going to completely just dismiss you and not even believe or non-believe you can just be like well you know come back to us if it gets worse and you're like well it is worse so that's why I'm here and then it's just from there it just yeah yeah it, it's frustrating sometimes trying to advocate for yourself mm -hmm. you can advocate yourself as much as you possibly can and you still sometimes feel like it falls on deaf ears which is really sad definitely it's really hard it is definitely because then it gives a bad name for everybody that works in the care sector because you might get a really nice nurse 
but then you find it hard like you think oh are they just putting their on to be nice and to try and trick me or yeah. something and the worst one I ever had was um when I had my stoma surgery and um I was kind of in there you know how you're in there for like a week mm. and so I got discharged but then a couple of weeks later I had to go back in because uh my bar well not my barbie but but my rectum got really severely infected and it was a really outdated ward like it was awful the bathroom literally the whole day had urine and poo samples just all over the floor like you, you had to make like a pathway through them oh my gosh and oh. me and my mom and my dad had all said like you do realize there's, there's a sample sitting there that aren't even viable anymore because they've been sitting there for that long and so it said about that and then one of the nurses at night time I, was, I rang my bell and I said, I am in absolute agony. Like, please, I have a really severe infection in my bum. I can barely move. Um, like, I'm, I'm just really in a lot of pain and I can't sleep. And this is like two in the morning. And she turned around to me and she's like, well, you don't look like you're in pain. Oh, my God. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realise being in pain had a specific look. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to look when you're so used to being in pain all the time? Like... You get used to concealing it, but even then, how do you? How would you even know that somebody's in pain, unless they and, and it, tell you? It's frustrating because we deal with pain, different thresholds of pain all, mm -hmm. all the time. When we actually tell someone we're in pain, it means we are actually in a lot of pain because we yeah, because we are so long. used to dealing with yeah. it on a daily basis that we feel like telling anybody would be pointless because you just know there's nothing that anybody can do because it's not severe yeah. enough to need yeah. to go into hospital. Um, it's just something you learn to live with but when it's getting really bad and you're in hospital and you're saying look I am in pain like you need to help me mm. you kind of trust that person to be like right okay like let me go see what I can sort out for you but you do get the odd ones that are just like oh you don't look like in pain or another one I've had is um you're too young to have that or you're too young to be in pain <laughs> and I'm like uh okay but that's not the situation here is the fact is that I am in pain yeah. Yes, I'm young, but um, I'm here because I need your help. You need to help me. Yeah. Yeah, it, it is annoying when people say that and like you don't look like you're in pain or yeah, and and stuff. Um, or it'll be um, oh, you don't look like you've got um, Crohn's or something. You know, like you know something like that. They'll say, oh, you know, you don't look old enough to even be chronically ill or unwell, and you're like, ah, uh, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> like, I think. Even if you do, like, even if you are in that um lot of pain and it is visible, because it's, it's, sometimes you can get really ill with Crohn's where yeah. it, it could be visible. Even then, people will still say the same. Like you, Exactly, because, you can't win. Yeah, because everyone has different eyes. We don't all have the same eyes. And even when I was really poorly and I did really look really ill, people didn't think I did. Um, yeah. and, and it's the same, whatever you look like. If you're doing better with your Crohn's or if you're not, you're still going to get the same remarks and um, even just even things that lead to using the disabled toilet if if, if someone is in a wheelchair and, 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 and stuff like that and um, it's good to see like you have um, like those signs on the toilets uh, with last couple years now that yeah shows, they've changed yeah. them yeah they're all, all, all they're not all good not all disabilities are visible so and they're also not called disabled toilets anymore i believe they're called accessible toilets i've noticed mm, yeah. they've been changing it to that as well which i think is really really good yeah i think that's good yeah it's, definitely it's it, it, it is good but I, I do also understand that um people that if a toilet is packed that they may use it uh if it's open if they if they don't have a key they'll use it because they do need the toilet but uh, people are out there that use it for the sake of it, but also there are people out there who, who are in their right to use to use that um, accessible toilet. Yeah, definitely. I think we keep a radar key in the car, don't we? Um, so that if we ever are out in public places or whatnot, and you know, for example, after an MRI scan and you have like the the prep with a stoma, like if your bag needs emptied, your bag needs emptied, and there is no ifs and buts, and there's there's no time to waste really i'm guessing the same aspect of that if you've had the prep and you don't have a stoma if you need to go to the toilet and empty your bubbles like you, you you need to go there's 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 no time to waste 
Um, so it's really handy to have a, a radar car, uh, radar key in the car. But I do need to get another one um, to keep in my bag as well. So that if I'm ever not in the car and I forget it, at least I have one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, I also, I, I mentioned this a couple of times on a few different episodes, but I, I thought it's, it's relevant to mention it here because yeah. um, I, 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 I went on holiday and Cardiff um, a couple months ago. September time um, and what happened was is um, they had a um, toilet where you had to pay you, 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 you had to pay to use the toilet um, and um, luckily the, 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 like the uh, the one that uh, one of the radar key um, was um, you didn't have to pay but um, but for example if someone didn't have to if, 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 if people couldn't have the money to go in it the gates yeah. are there to stop you going in. So that's yeah. awful, and it's such a human basic right just to be able to use Definitely. a toilet. Yeah, yeah, that's awful. I don't even know how stuff like that still exists. There's still some of those up in Scotland, actually. We have to pay to use the toilet. And there's been a few times where I haven't had any money on me because you wouldn't think that you would need money to go to the toilet. And then when I've gotten there, I'm like, oh, um, and I end up just actually just crawling over the bars and just going to the toilet if there's nobody. You know, at the side desk. Yeah, nobody's, yeah. Nobody's just watching them and securing them. Yeah. Yeah. So I just hop over them. And I'm just like, I'll deal with it later because, like, I need to go. I need to go. Um, and it's hard now because it's more of a cashless society now. No one's going to have any change on them anymore. No. Um, we're very lucky if we do have any money on us. Um, if we go on trips anywhere, because usually the money's spent on the fuel to get there, maybe something to eat and drink. That's kind of you. Mm. Yeah, I use I use my card for everything now. Put my cards on my phone, so I just take my, my phone everywhere. Yeah, like the the pay app. I have the Google Pay app. It's really handy. Yeah, yeah. It, it is better. Like that, like you just put put you, It's like magic, isn't it? You got you. You just put it over the machine and. <laughs> isn't it so easy as well though? Don't you think like back? Obviously, when you're in a, amongst a flare, and you know you always had to wait for like to put your card in and then the pin in. But isn't it so great? now that you can literally just scan your card and go and i think that would have been so good to have when i was newly diagnosed yeah it's it is very handy um like but not but not everywhere does that as well um mm. it is it's only um quite a lot of places do but there are some people places that don't there's a lot of places up here as well that um do cash only yeah really? yeah yeah, yeah. Um, like the local Indian here, they don't have a card machine at that. So, like, if you want to order it, then you've got to go to the cash machine, and then go pay for it. And it's, I know it's, it's obviously just an Indian, it's whatever. But there are still places that do that, like just normally. Like, um, a couple of weeks ago, we went to Pitlochry. Um, that's just kind of outside Perth. Um, obviously, if you don't know where that is, and we went to the Enchanted Forest, and it was cash only for everything. Oh, right. I'm sure it was, wasn't it? Yeah, because it said up on the sign. Um, and like, so once you got there, there was no, uh, like places to take out money because it was in the middle of a forest. Mm. So if you've got like a lot of people had kids with them, and I just think like, what would have happened like if people are out there and they want to get their kids something to eat or drink, and, and they've got no money, <laughs> and they've got no money. I just think it's so outdated. I don't know why they do that. Yeah, it's, it's it's not good, and like I, even so, there there are certain places that just do money like um without card, and there are some places that just do card. So yeah, it, it's very bizarre why they do that. And like one, I thought maybe the the place that do card is because of COVID and and people don't use the money, and and then I see, yeah, which is understandable. Yeah, and then you just see places that do money, which I don't understand why that's a thing unless they can't afford to have a cash machine, a card machine in in the in in the place and. But I yeah. think, but I think now, like like clothes shops don't really have. Um, if a place doesn't have maybe a restaurant or or some food kind of place in it, they will not have a toilet most likely. Yeah, no. I I actually had an experience where I was in a flare, but I really wanted to just go shopping, and I was actually with my granny, and we were in New Look, and um. I'd went in and remember when you signed up to Crohn's and Colitis UK back then, you gave like a donation and they gave you like a can't wait card. Yeah. So I had a can't wait card and they were white with red writing. I remember it very well. And I went in and I said, I am so sorry. I am 
so bursting for the toilet can I please use your toilet and um they wouldn't let me use their toilet so I ended up having to go to what was it it was either like a bookshop or like a craft store shop or something and luckily I showed them my can't wait card and I don't know if they'd had training on it or if they just literally were like well she clearly needs the toilet so we'll just let her go and they didn't actually have any public toilets so I actually had to go and use the staff toilets mm. and I just don't understand like the logic in that like you know somebody's like you Jenny for example like with your urine infection like if you need to go to the toilet you don't have time no. to walk down steps to then go find the public toilets like if you need to go you need to go and um, yeah. it's so sad that so many people do get refused access to toilets even if they are staff toilets it's dangerous it to hold it in for a long time mm -hmm. especially if you have a urine infection oh definitely because um, it makes it worse yeah um and i i i, I went to yesterday i went to Mataland, the first time i've been in a few years and they had um public toilets a few years ago Hi. um but now they don't they don't have public what? Uh, they don't have um, toilets anymore. They only have staff toilets. Um, so they used to have them. And then I thought, why does that happen then? Like, um, I know they don't... Maybe it was due to COVID. Maybe. Like, but like, but that, that's been around a long time, the motherland. And it's always had that toilet. And then they said, yeah. um, asked, do you have a toilet? And they said, no, we just have, um, we just have staff. Well, they, they, they didn't say that. I just presume they do because um, they, they... Yeah, they're not... Good. They're not going to let staff go without a toilet, are they? No. Exactly. And I just think that's so unfair because why would you want your customers who are potentially chronically ill or have a serious infection who just maybe want to try and get out of hospital for the day or something on day pass? And it's like, you know, everybody needs the toilet, not just your staff. Yeah, and I, I, I have been, I was in a situation like yours, Alana, once and I went to, I went to an, into a place and I, I showed them I just can't wait card and um, I, I got as far as saying oh, I'll, I'll go on your floor if you don't let me in, um, oh. um, um, in the calmest way. Um, and they, I think they did let me in, and in the end, but, but it shouldn't have to be like that. Like, you shouldn't have to explain yourself to that, yeah, graphic way. Like if you don't let me go, like I'm gonna go. It shouldn't have to be that point. It should just be that, you know, you show them the just wait card and. You, yeah. know, you should be allowed to to kind of go. Even if you know if you're maybe in a restaurant and um you go into the toilet and you go out and they look at you like oh, you're just coming in to use the toilet. You haven't bought a drink. You haven't got a meal. You shouldn't have to do that. You shouldn't have to go into no. a place just because you haven't bought anything. I had that experience a couple of years ago because so the place that we went to at Lockery we used to go every year, but because of COVID for two years it wasn't running and right outside where you would queue for the coach buses to take you to the forest is a big hotel and I went in and I said I'm really sorry could I use your toilet and they were like well are you like eating here and I said no and they were like yeah well sorry you can't use your toilet unless like you're no here problem. to eat food <laughs> apparently my Alexa just went off sorry um so then I had to go all the way down the street back to where we were parked, near near the car park where we were parked. And they were really lovely to let me use their toilet with no questions asked. They were just like, yep, yeah, toilet's up there, there you go. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, it shouldn't be like that, though. It's, no. Yeah. yeah. I, 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 yeah, like, so sometimes I don't even ask, I just go, <laughs> I, I just go yeah. in and just go to the toilet. Just, just, just saving... Uh, I might sneak in in the back, and if the toilet's at the back, I'll, I'll go in and, and go out. Or if you've got weather spoons, it's like an absolute maze of going down like two flights of stairs just to find the bloody toilet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, the weather spoons toilet, so I've always got lots of stairs to go around. Or it's so odd. It's like Alice in Wonderland. It's like, <clears throat> what the hell is the toilet? <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I think there's a toilet app now as well where you can, you can attract toilets. Was there? Uh, yeah, I think there's an app where you can see on your phone where the nearest toilet is, um, which is handy. But if you need one, I don't think you'll be wanting to look at the app because there's, that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. there's loads of toilets on it. Um, no, that would actually be really handy if you could send me um, the screenshot of the app or whatever. Because um, Jamie is a delivery driver um, for um, a food store and 
so he's sometimes sent out to like really remote areas and things and obviously with him having a stoma and stuff as well sometimes it can be difficult to find a toilet yeah yeah I'll... obviously if you're not if you're not known to that area you know you can deliver shop in there but if you don't know the area you know you've absolutely no clue where the toilets are and we actually found during covid as well a lot of the public toilets were closed because of covid yeah they were even in like actual shops like um mm. aldi i went in and i was heavily pregnant i was about six months pregnant or something or seven and i was starting to get quite big not too big but at the point where that i could not hold in my wee if i if i tried <laughs> and uh the toilets were locked do you remember that and i was like can you please let me use the toilet like yeah sorry uh toilets are closed for the public and then so i went to b and q and they had a padlock on the accessible toilet no way and i was like well i'm not even gonna bother asking about that then because that's a no-go and then i eventually went into little and they were like yeah sure that's fine just toilets there yeah, and by this point, I was literally like in pain from from holding it in. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 not nice holding your your uh, your wee in, is it? No, because then it obviously makes you anxious. It's like you don't want to leave the house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a quality of life thing again, isn't it? It's like yeah. the, you want to make sure you're able to still you live your life with some quality of life. Exactly, you know, and not be hindered by things that could be so easily just not even thought of if you know you were just able to to access simple things definitely definitely and it, it's like it's 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 normal when you go to a toilet and it's padlocked like that so um i just thought it was so odd <laughs> never seen anything like that in my life and i felt like taking a picture and tweeting it about it but I was so bloody bursting (laughs) I did not have time to think about that I was like I had one thing in my mind and that was to get a toilet and that was it yeah crazy yeah Yeah, I I had a similar situation when I was on holiday at the beach and there was no toilet Um, and there was a a padlock toilet shut um so I had to go I I can't remember where I went um I went somewhere (laughs) um (laughs) But yeah, that's the thing though, when you've got to, you've got to. And I think that's one thing I definitely didn't realise before having my stoma that that would ever happen to me again. Yeah. Obviously, like with Jenny, you didn't know you had Crohn's until you were kind of rushed in for your your surgery and you woke up and you yeah. were told you had Crohn's and by the way, you've got a stoma. <laughs> um, but again, I, I maybe, I don't know about you, but you would think that now after having a stoma not having to maybe worry about toilets and things but then when you've got secondary issues like ETIs and things yeah it's something that doesn't even cross your mind until it happens and you're just like this is what it's like this is what I've got to yeah. go through again it's it's it, it's very true because when when I started with the UTIs and things and it was stopping me from going about my day the, the first time I started having them I was with JJ on my own um obviously Rick was at work, Lewis was with his mum and it was just me and JJ for the weekend and I had to do lots of shopping, I had a very busy day, I had to go football and everything kind of had to stop and I didn't know what to do because obviously I had a six-year-old who needed my attention and I couldn't get off the toilet and I was like oh my god it's just it put it, put it kind of in perspective to me that this is what it could have potentially been like prior to mastoma if you know yeah. what I mean because I hear people talking about it all the time and Mine was obviously, I, I always say, yes, sometimes I feel a bit like a fraud because I never had the Crohn's beforehand, if you know yeah. what I mean. I just had very much Crohn's and stoma straight away. Um, but having the UTIs recently, and it has affected what I'm doing and where I'm going and how I can live my life effectively, it's 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 horrible, it's scary. I, I think don't... as well, being a mum, so obviously Odin's only one. <clears throat> But there are times I have to take him into the bathroom with me because I'm like, I need to go. And that's even without a urine infection. And it, I don't know if it's to do with pregnancy or if it's to do with this kidney issues that I have um, where I get extreme pain if I don't go in time. And I can't even imagine what it's like with a six-year-old because it's bad enough with a one-year-old is that the problem is, is that you can only keep them entertained for so long. Yeah. Before you're like, mom, 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 mom. 
picking up things or they're throwing things or they're throwing themselves on the floor because they're so bored that they just want to get out of there and you feel so terrible. And I think that's one of the things I really admire with mums that have got IBD that obviously don't have stomas and things. Um, you know, they've got newborns and they're having to put like Moses baskets in the bathrooms because they can't get off the toilet. And I just couldn't imagine being a mum now and seeing how I was beforehand, like before my stoma and things, and being a mum back then, I just think, oh my god, like I don't know how they do it. When when I first started with symptoms, obviously it was very much within two weeks I was in hospital, but I had the two weeks of just going to the toilet all the time, and JJ was one, and I always remember if there was times where I was with JJ on my own, obviously I was off work poorly anyway, so I wasn't yeah. working. So JJ would come in the bathroom with me, so it would be easier. You know, he's one, he's not really doing much. Um, he would come up with either like a game or a jigsaw or something, but it got into the habit of where he would sit on my knee while I was on the toilet. And we'd do some songs, we'd do some chatting, you know, to try and take my mind off it, but also yeah. make not think that anything's wrong or make him worry, because even though they're only one, they're very... They're, very they're aware of the atmosphere and yeah. they're aware of like how you're feeling, absolutely. Yeah. They, they know they know exactly what's going on so it's oh, just yeah. used to just sit and sing songs and stuff like that and it was only after my my second operation my barbie bone operation i went for a week this was as i was healing i was pretty much well enough to go back to work and things i went for a week and jj came into the bathroom and just sat on my knee because <laughs> it was like a habit for him to do it yeah. because oh. that's what we used to do and it just reminded me i was like oh my god i've kind of come a long way in the two years yeah. that I've I've had this condition um but I also had a little bit of a flashback as well when I was at the football with him the other week he said he needs to go to the toilet so I went to the toilet with him obviously I didn't realize at that point I was suffering from a UTI and as soon as I sat on the toilet I needed a wee and that was it I couldn't get off the toilet so he went into the next cubicle because everybody was watching the football it was while he was still playing so there was no one in the toilet so it was just me and him so I said you go in the next one and come back in when you finished so he did but at this point, I still couldn't move. <laughs> so I was just like, again, trying to keep cheery, keep it happy, making sure that he wasn't aware that I was in a lot of pain. But he did sense there was something wrong. And he heard some women walking and he went, excuse me, excuse me, my mummy's really sore. <laughs> and I was like, I'm OK, oh. I'm OK. You know, like trying to make it a bit like, don't worry, don't come in, it's yeah, fine. Like, you don't need I'm to call all... anyone, like, it's good. <laughs> like, my child's not being neglected right now. Like, I just I just can't get off the toilet. Yeah, all I, I'm all right, honestly, it's fine, JJ, don't worry, it's fine. And I, was, I took him back to his dad, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go home. <laughs> that was my oh, bit where I was like, bless. yeah, um, I need to go home. I can't see, carry that on is, anymore. That is one thing I do worry about with Alden, is that when I get ill, it's so, you know, yourself unpredictable. It can just happen like that. And obviously there's going to yeah. be times throughout his life where I'm going to end up being in hospital and things like that. But um, yeah, I don't really think about how like how to deal with it like when he's in my presence. And I think mm -hmm. as well, when you're on your own, say for example, you're sick or whatnot, sometimes you really just have to really grind through the day just to try and get through the day. And you'll think, oh, you know, once they're in bed at night time, you think, oh, I really could have done this with him, oh, I should have maybe have done that, maybe I should have given him a cuddle. And, like, the mum guilt, oh, my God, it's unreal. The mum guilt is, is, is the hardest thing. Mum guilt is hard. It is really hard to get to grips with. But while you're going through your day, you're only using as much strength as you have. Like, yeah, and sometimes it's bare minimum. From somewhere, and as soon as they're in bed, it's like you go, <sighs> right, I'm done. I could go to bed. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? It's like a bit of a relief. Not that you're happy they're in bed. Obviously, you are happy they're in bed. In the, no, they're but it's just you've used up well so and... much energy and had yeah. so much pain and felt so crap the whole day that when it finally gets that rest stage, you just it's like a relief. deflate. You're just like, oh, like I needed that. I needed to just sit <laughs> I could have have five minutes of peace and quiet. <laughs> but then sometimes I get to a point where it's like, it's been half an hour and everyone you're like oh I really start to miss them now <laughs> you do you do and when they're poorly they're nice and cuddly <laughs> like they'll well, just come unless cuddle. right now where they're screaming um oh yeah <laughs> yeah 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 well we we've 
it we've done this for so long we've we it's been um it's been really fun speaking to you both <laughs> it's been lovely to catch up because i'm not really difficult we've had to reschedule a couple of times yeah to be honest i'm just glad that we have been able to do this and i haven't had to go through it and see to Odin. i think it's the longest he's slept since it worked last out night well. but the night before yeah it's fake My isn't goodness. it <laughs> <laughs> and this is where the this is where the deflate after after we all come off and do our own things that'll be where me and jenna like <sighs> yeah <laughs> go for a bath yeah, yeah yeah well before we go i'm I'm just gonna ask you both um um if you if, if you want to say any any advice or any anything just to finish off um and then we can go okay <laughs> I'll, I'll start with you alana um and then i'll go on to jenny so do you have any all the words um i would just say that maybe because obviously me and jenny are moms and we both have ibd uh if you are struggling um perhaps maybe wanting to have a family or you have had your family and you've got ibd um there's a really great group on facebook called um moms with ibd and it's really really helpful a lot of us share all of our experiences in there um or sometimes you just support each other and just be like, yeah, like I go through that. Um, if you are struggling um, in your uh, TTC journey or just anything like that, I definitely recommend popping in um, because it can be quite valuable. It's something I never had before I had Odin. So that's there if, if you need it. Yeah, that that that's a really good idea. Like um, for, 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 for months with IBD and... Like you are now, Alana. So I know but, that's weird. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, f f thanks, Alana. Um, it's been it's been great. Uh, speak Thank to you. you. Um, I know we speak to each other quite a lot anyway, but uh, it, it's nice face to face. <laughs> it is definitely, and it's just yeah. nice to have that time just to voice check. Sometimes you don't always have the time just to sit and text on your phone. <laughs> I don't know. Right. A lot of effort, I think, doing that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, Jenny, um, you got anything to say? My advice is just take each day as it comes. So if you feel like you're having a bad day, feel your bad day, go for your bad day, have a rest, chill out, try and do as little as you possibly can. And then if you do have a good day, feel celebrate your good days as well. But only feel that you can do so much and learn how to say no. Because <laughs> that took a long time for me to learn how to say no. <laughs> Yeah, that's definitely very, very good advice. Yeah. Saying no is hard. Um, it's very hard. It but sometimes you've got to do what's right for you. Yeah. You're just Even if you feel it. guilty for it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, but we're only just, human. We can only can only put up with so much and yeah. you know, got to look after yourself. Yeah, that is very important. Um, but yeah, really good advice, Jenny. Really good advice, Lana. Um, I'll, I'll let you go now because... Um, it's been, it's been, we've done this for a long time. I think it's longer than we both did all our episodes. Um, so <laughs> yeah, you'll be um, sitting editing for the next like two weeks, being like, yeah. hmm, what bits am I going to cut out? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's been all good though. It's been really fun. Um, um, to, to everyone listening, I hope you enjoyed it, like re related, um, in, in, in any way. Um, and you, I hope you both have a, a great Christmas because it isn't any Thank Christmas. You. It oh. is only a month, not even a month. Of, well, actually, um, under a month away. Yeah, not that far um but um yeah so thanks guys it's been really fun thank and, you both yeah, thank you very soon. much speak to you soon <laughs> bye bye <laughs> bye